Say good morning to Dr. Lillehead, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the commander, United States Africa Command, General Michael Langley, and the commander, United States European Command, General Christopher Caboli, represented by the Chief of Staff, Major General Andresiak, welcome to the change of command of United States Space Forces in Europe and Space Forces Africa, where Colonel Max Lance will pass command to Brigadier General Jacob Middleton. I am Major Trey Greer, and I will guide you through today's events. We want to thank you for joining us in person on this historic occasion, and we bid welcome to those attending virtually from locations around the world. We are fortunate to have a number of distinguished and special guests here with us today. Please hold your applause until all have been recognized. Spouse of Chief of Space Operations, Mrs. Jennifer Salter. The Foreign Policy Advisor to United States European Command, Ambassador Kate Marie Burns. The Deputy Commander, United States Air Forces in Europe and Air Forces Africa, Lieutenant General John Lamontagne. From United States Marine Corps Forces in Europe and Africa, the Commander, Major General Robert Softy, and the Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major Roland R. McGinnis. From United States Naval Forces Europe and Africa, Combined Task Force 66, Rear Admiral Michael Mattis. From United States Space Forces, Senior Advisor to the Chief of Space Operations, Ms. Augusta Benz Perky. Representing the Ramstein Air Base Host Community, Mayor Rolf Hedgelup. Representing the Kaiserslautern Military Community, Lord Mayor Beata Kibble and County Commissioner. Rolf Lesmeister. Representing the Rhineland Fault State Parliament, Mr. Marcus Klein. From United States Space Forces Central Command, the Commander, Colonel Christopher Putman and his spouse, Mary Ann, and the Command Component Senior Enlisted Leader, Chief Master Sergeant Jeffrey Braylon. From 3rd Air Force, Deputy Commander, Colonel Calvin Powell, and Command Chief, Chief Master Sergeant Stephanie Pates. From the 86th Airlift Wing, the Commander, Premier General Adrian Williams, her spouse, Rodney, and representing the Command Chief, Chief Master Sergeant Christopher Carter. From the Ministry of National Defense of the Republic of Poland, Director of the Department of Innovation, Brigadier General Martin Korka, and Chief Specialist Ms. Anna Wojtkowiak. From the 19th Battlefield Coordination Detachment, the Commander, Colonel Brad Fosnock. Finally, we would also like to welcome all other host nation, distinguished visitors and NATO partners, flag and general officers, commanders, senior enlisted leaders, family, and friends here with us today. Ed Sneak Bildheim. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party in the plane of bubbles and flourishes. <laughs>
Thank you, Staff Sergeant Kasul, for the wonderful renditions of the national anthems of the United States Air Forces Europe and Africa Band. Thank you also to the Ramstein Air Base Honor Guard for presenting the colors. Chaplain Luke Lee Barkley will now give the invocation. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, as we think super super today, I also humbly give thanks that you are super only. As such, we are grateful to serve our nation and align with like-minded nations to be instruments of hope, peace, and stability. God, today is historic as we say a heartfelt goodbye to Colonel Max Lance II and share our gratitude for his amazing efforts and service to stand up Space Forces Europe and Space Forces Africa. Oh God, we can never say thank you enough for his energetic and selfless leadership. We've been inspired by his sacrifices, commitment, and ability to navigate the complexities of our day. May he and his family find joy and peace of mind in the transitions ahead. God, I humbly ask for your continued blessings to pour out upon Brigadier General Jacob Middleton and his family. I pray that you will continue to endow him from above so that he may have continued success leading guardians. May he further develop them with character, connection, commitment, Courage among his team so they can thrive personally and professionally while they support the mission and operations of U.S. European Command and U.S. Africa Command. In closing, God, I plead for your mercy and interventions as we all fall, often fall short. I pray for the well being and success of all who are asked and tasked to lead. And lastly, please inspire us so that our efforts will be a mobilizing force for good. Is I humbly ask in your name. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Barton. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is my distinct honor to introduce the Chief of Space Operations, United States Space Force, General Chance Sultan. So let me begin by saying thank you. Thanks to our wonderful host nation partners, community leaders, and friends. We could not be here today without your continued support. Additionally, thank you to all the generals, chiefs, host nation representatives, allied partners, and special guests. I am grateful that you can be here with us to witness the next step for the Space Forces Europe and Africa. Before I talk about the component, I'd like to express my gratitude to the monumental and foundational work done by the preceding Director of Space Forces team. Several members of that team are still here, but likely due to rotate out soon, so I didn't want to miss this opportunity. It was about three years ago when I called Colonel James Quinn, last Director of Space Forces, and asked for his thoughts on converting that staff element into a full-fledged service component. And without hesitation, he and his mighty team worked all the initial efforts for component standing, including UMD realignment with your safety, host nation and other support agreements, budget support, the initial component hires, org structure, patch design, component headquarters building selection, all while ensuring there was no risk to the ongoing operational requirements here in the AR. Amazing effort, the, res the results speak for themselves. Well done. But then, 249 days ago, that initial effort officially became the U.S. Space Force component to UCOM and AFRICOM. And I'm delighted to see many of the same faces I saw here when we established and activated the unit only 249 days ago. Are you bored already, Gonzo? Are you sure? Okay. Can't believe we didn't wait for Oktoberfest. <laughs> In all seriousness, I've known Max Lance for more than 20 years. And, we had, and I, when I had a tough job that I needed done well, I called him and he answered the call to establish United States Space Forces Europe Africa. This unit is singularly responsible for integrating space forces with two combatant commands, enhancing the security of our nation and its allies from Iceland to South Africa. As such, Colonel Lance had the unique pleasure of reporting to two separate combatant commanders as well as the Chief of Space Operations. Every Colonel's dream, three four-star bosses. 
despite the daunting task of answering to all three of us, or maybe because he had to answer to all three of us, Gonzo led his team not just to do things right, but to do the right things. To fully integrate into two combined commands and to deliver space power to our allies and partners throughout this combined region. If you'll indulge me, I'd like to take a few moments to highlight some of the Union's many accomplishments. In just eight months, Space Force Europe established relationships with 15 other spacefaring nations, enhanced integration with NATO via automated data flow, and provided training on joint electromagnetic spectrum operations, not to mention supporting Ukraine's self-defense against Russia. Space Force URAF built processes to incorporate space fires, effects, and targeting for over 30 targets into U.S. UCOM joint fires validated by austere challenges. This was the first ever instance of a Joint Force Space Component Command supporting a Tier 1 U.S. UCOM exercise, and it served as a testbed for the first deployment of the space planning team concept. Space Force Europe Africa integrated the Tactical Surveillance, Reconnaissance, and Tracking Program into U.S. Africa directly supporting five African nations with reports enabling disaster relief, monitoring cross-border violent extremist activities, and policing illegal fishing in sovereign waters. The distinctive success of this program led to a global expansion with other combatant commands that are in work as we speak. And these are just a handful of Space Force Europe's achievements. And the fact that they came from barely eight months of work reflects on the incredible talent, dedication, and spirit the Guardians here. And they also reflect on the leadership and tireless efforts of Colonel Lance. So it's only right to say thank you for all you've done. And a special thanks to his wife. I know Leslie couldn't be here, but please pass along both Jennifer and I's thanks to her for loaning us for a few short months here at the end of your career. Gonzo, you are the right man for the job with the right relationship and team building skills to get us where we are today. You laid the foundations, charted the course. And now it's over to Brigadier General Jake Middleton to take Space Force Europe where we need to go next. General Middleton is the right man for the next job. I've known and had the pleasure to work directly with Jake for more than 12 years now, and I know he's up to this challenge. His experience with the Joint Staff, the National Security Council, legislatures, intelligence community will all serve him in good stead in this command. His other two bosses and I will look to him to forge closer connections with NATO, our allies, and other vital regional partners across two continents to integrate space power at every level. It's no, con co it's no coincidence that we've been brought, we've brought a general officer to lead this critical unit. Elevating the command to a one-star level reaffirms the Space Force's commitment both to the Joint Force and to our international partners. It continues normalizing the space domain with those of our sister services, each one important and necessary for the success our combined operations. Service components like Space Force Europe provide the vital connective tissue between space capability and the combatant commander authorities, which is why we're implementing them around the globe. Our most valuable strategic advantage is that we never fight alone. Standing alongside our allies and partners allows us to leverage and multiply our strength to counter the increasingly interconnected threats we face. I'm, I can confidently say that there are a few more impactful positions of leadership within the Space Force than that of a service component command, especially one supporting two regions. I am grateful to Colonel Lance for answering my call, and I look forward to what Brigadier General Middleton will achieve next. Thanks to both of you for your service. Good luck. Silver soon. Thank you, General Salzman. It is now my privilege to introduce the commander, United States Africa Command, General Michael Langley. Good morning, uh, distinguished guests, General Salzman, Major General Andrews, me, all of you colleagues and local leaders, and friends. What a great day for Guardians and the total joint force. It's great to be here with all of you at this event as we practice and execute military customs. We'll pass the guide on from Colonel 
Max Lance to Brigadier General Jacob Milton, known as D.B. Milton. That's probably what that means. When, you, when he stands up here today, you'll know why. You probably need a microphone. This. So congratulations to Max and your wife, Leslie, on the successful stand-up of this great command. Knowing that you're a fellow Texan, back in December, I had no doubts you could get this job done. Guardians, the guardians that you look to for an out and about to execute such a vital mission. Did a great job. Let's have a round of applause for Max. <laughs> Max, you knew that space is under the frontier. The domain that we will dominate still goes unmatched in some competitors. But before we get to that, let me say it's a great time. Celebrating what we have in common. You've been a great Texan. However, there's some departure from that. Here's guns up for you and in our chair. You guys found that out when you came down to Bon Swan and the chairman came over your Texas tip. Branch up there in North Texas. I love him. Only departure is he's a Cowboy fan. And I'm a Cowboy fan, and you follow the homes. <laughs> So he plays for the Dallas Texans. Oh, I mean Kansas City Chiefs. Okay, back to what we're here for. Max, your leadership in establishing this unit and getting these guardians ready has been exemplary. You set the example. We stood here nine months ago to stand up the first ever space component for Africa. And for you come. Now we gather here to pass the colors. When we stood this command up, we asked you and the team to cover operations, activities, and investments of over 100 countries collectively between Europe and the continent of Africa. And that accounts for 53% of the recognized world. This is no small feat. And you've given AFRICOM a voice for space. The Guardians gathered here and aided our allies and partners by integrating ongoing future efforts in our shared operations, activities, and investments across Africa. Space for your athletes significantly increased the capability of our joint force while promoting security, stability, and prosperity for our partners. They bring a level of technical expertise to a domain that is rapidly advancing and changing. We need you now more than ever on this global scene, in this global, ever-changing strategic environment. Over the past year, this unit provided exquisite space training and support of African life, first of its kind. This was a critical addition to our already world-class exercise at request, at the request of our partners, non-NATO allies in Morocco. You stayed the LinkedIn and my team for the defense of Djibouti in the face of layered threats and provided support to stability operations across the continent. Space for your efforts in building space reconnaissance tracking program with AFRICOM J2 allows us to provide unclassified materials to facilitate information sharing with our African partners. You know what? PRC doesn't do that. The Russian Federation doesn't do that. That's why our partners leave us as a partner of choice. This remains high in demand. The recent implementation of $5.3 billion significant security cooperation initiatives for Angola, Kenya, Morocco, and Nigeria was a major step forward for this year. Before I become very large, and a great opportunity for our partners. Gonzo. My strategy and campaign plan drive home the notion that we are, our African partners do lead these initiatives, but the U.S. and allies we enable it 
And that's a true example. You set a true example of that. And your unit is a shining example of how it gets implemented. These initiatives will guide partner nations in aligning space policy, strategy, promoting responsible behavior in space, and cultivating a cadre of space professionals. That's going to be the output. That's going to be a return of investment across the African continent, all of which is improved with the leadership and expertise of the guardians that are here at Space Force Europe at. So Max, Leslie, I wish you and your family well as you retire back to Colorado Springs and enjoy your time there. Imagine you will be following the new big team, but still not the Cowboys. But I'll tell you what, now the incoming, for the incoming commander, as I've already alluded to, Brigadier General Middleton, he comes to us from the Pentagon, Op Team 1, down in the, the basement of the Pentagon. I understood your duty as the Deputy Director of Operations in the National Military Command Center. DBS, are you ready for this task that lays ahead? You bring a unique perspective as a commander, spending six years of your career enlisting commanding at every level thereafter. I know you will bring a wealth of experience and energy to the command and it is a humbling endeavor. So as you take the flag, I trust that you will take care of the guardians. You will guide them, you will teach them, and you will lead them. And every word of your motto is super simple, always above. Take this command to new heights, I should say, a new world. Congratulations to both of you. Simple soup. You rock. Thank you, General Andrew. The United States Space Forces in Europe and Space Forces Africa is privileged to serve two combatant commands. It is my honor to introduce the Chief of Staff, United States European Command, Major General Peter Andresiak. Hey, good morning, uh, distinguished guests, and General Saltzman, General Langley, Ambassador Burns, Lieutenant General Montaigne, uh, General and Flag Officers, friends and family on behalf of General Cavoli. And U.S. European Command, it's a privilege to stand before you as we commemorate uh, this profound and meaningful tradition, the change of command ceremony for Space Forces Europe and Africa. It is a first for this newly established formation. So this ceremony truly signifies not only a transition of leadership, but also the enduring stability, continuity, and unity of the mission here in Europe. First and foremost, I would like to extend the deepest gratitude to, to Max, Colonel Lance, for your exceptional leadership and dedication. Max, your tenure has been marked by significant achievements and a uh, steadfast commitment to advancing uh, our strategic objectives uh, in Yukon. And under your leadership, Space Forces Europe and Africa has navigated a complex, the complex challenges and seized opportunities to enhance operational capabilities in support of our NATO allies partners in the defense of Europe. I remember when you came into, into the office to talk about standing up uh, a, a component, right? It is a significant uh, task. And, and Max, you've done a phenomenal job, covered a lot of ground, and you've done it well. So we're, we're proud of you. So on behalf of the command, I wish you and your wife, Leslie, uh, well in retirement and back in Colorado Springs. I would also like to recognize uh, and give special thanks to you, CVF, sort of the, for the A3 uh, the finance team and the 85th and 86th Civil Engineering Squadron and the Ramstein Air Base team, uh, who were all critical in establishing the new command here. We really appreciate the service as well. So, let me talk through some specific accomplishments of the command. Uh, Space Forces Europe and Africa accomplished a lot during the first year, uh, being the, the most perilous time in Europe since World War II. 
Japan continues to be decisive in U.S. support to Ukraine and the wider defense of Europe. And being UCOM's voice for space, the formation worked tirelessly to establish capability with our new NATO allies, and then also helping build and synchronize the space engagement strategy nested with UCOM objectives. The command is also, for the first time, integrating space targeting and exercise on Spirit Challenge 24, which not only highlighted the importance of space domain to work fighting, but also identified the critical lessons learned to sharpen our edge against any adversary that we may face. So to the men and women of the Space Force, Europe and Africa, you're the heart and soul of this command. Your professionalism, expertise, and unwavering dedication are the cornerstones of our mission success. And so as we embark on the new chapter under the leadership of Brigadier General Middleton, I'm confident that you will continue to uphold the highest standards and mission of mission accomplishment. So DB, your experience in Washington, the joint staff and interagency will be a critical neighbor as you take a command uh, to new heights. And so welcome to the team. We're proud to have you. I look forward to working with you. So in closing, I look forward uh, to what this command will achieve in the future. You'll build upon the strong foundations established by Max, and then also striving for innovation and operational superiority in today's space environment. And I have no doubt the Space Forces Europe and Africa will continue to be a critical component to the defense of our nation and our freedom. Strong and together, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the first commander of the United States Space Forces in Europe and Space Forces Africa, Colonel Max E. Lance II.
serve and relinquish Japan to the United States Space Forces in Europe. Please remain standing for the United States Space Forces Africa change of command. So, for 
me and uh, the United States Space Force, it's always it's an honor and privilege to serve.